Um, and let's go right in here. All right. Okay, there. Okay. It's called panel board selection and installation. Uh, we talked a little bit about panel board, guys. Next week, uh, next semester, Derek also we're going to bring um, speakers to talk about panel boards. So in any secret book, there's load centers, the terms that they use for that little box there in the wall. There's something called load center. That's residential up to 200 amp. Throw it out the window. We're not doing residential anymore. We'll finish that. And the second one, guys, is they call it panel boards. Panel boards, they are panel boards either in the wall or on the wall. They can You can buy them up to 1,200 amps, any voltages, 208, 120, 480, 207, 240, up to 1,200 amps. After 1,200 amps, 1,200 amps is a lot. So they look like this cabinet there against the wall, big boys against the wall. They need a wall to hold them. These are the panel boards. After the panel boards, they move into so-called switch board and switch gear. And Adam, a switch board or a switch gear is a standalone structure. It sits like chat right here. It doesn't need a wall to lean against and be mounted against or in, right? It's standalone. They call them switch uh, boards, switch gears, and, uh, and, and switch boards. And these are the only difference is they're standalone. You can put them right in the middle of the room. Um, and these can go from 1,200 amps all the way to 6,000 amps. And these ones, the switchboards and the switch gear, we're going to be using them, guys, next project. As of this, as of this moment, you gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are using only panel boards, which can take you all the way up to 1,200 amps. And guess what? Our largest panel was what? 500 amps. So we're covered with panel boards. They're going to be thrown against the wall. So. Matt, when you pick them in Revit, remember that pick these panels and you put them in the wall? That These are called panel boards. They can go as high as 1,200 amp, covered for this project. Next project, we're going to go switch gears. What's the difference? One standalone by itself. The other need a wall or something to hold it, either in or on. Does that make sense? And the only difference really is the amps. The bigger the amps, the more you, you really need the standalone equipment. Okay. So that's what uh, what we're going to be doing, guys, on that particular one. Let me grab my um, my pointer here. Um, so a few things I would like to emphasize about this chapter, guys, uh, right here for selecting panels. How do you select the panels? Um, I, if I ask Adam right now, he will say, Chad, what we did the load calculation with you a, a second ago. We find the amps and we went and we found ourselves an overcome protection pin device from 240.6 and we got our panel. It's exactly what, what this chapter is telling you. Based on the amps, based on the loads in your building, based on the load calculation that you guys did twice with Chad, and you're going to be doing it another time in the spring. So that's really answered here. Uh, correct the place and the number of circuits in a panel board. Um, this is nice because it has some visuals. Uh, how do they build the circuit? The single uh, uh, lighting circuits or receptacle circuits in a panel board, guys. Uh, correct feeder size. How do you size the feeder to the panel board? And it, can you... Can you have a panel board that's that's 600 amp and you bring a 100 amp feeder to it? You can if you don't care about burning the feeder. So what, what happened, guys, in a panel board? There are three things you have to synchronize, right? Here's an overcompetition device. Here's a panel. So this is my panel. This is my feeder to the panel. And this is my overcompetition device to the panel. All these have to be in sync. What does in sync? So this have to, they all have to be the same. If this is 200 amp, this feeder have to be 200 amp for the most part, and this panel have to be 200 amp. That's the that's in a perfect world. Now, what what dictates the whole situation, guys, is the overcome picture device right here. So now look at this: 200 amp, 200 amp, 200 amp. That's ideally the bit perfect design. Feeder, overcome picture device, and panel the same size. When they say the panel, the cover inside the the copper aluminum inside the panel. Now, now for, for voltage drop atom, for voltage drop and carrying, I could have a four, uh, see, I'm going to have a 300 amp feeder because of voltage drop, feeding a 300 amp, a 400 amp panel. Okay? Look what happened. I have a conductor worth of 300 and a panel worth of 400 protected by 200 amp circuit breaker. This is legit, but this is what I call a poor man's design. Bad idea. You really don't want to do that for the most part. You would be in situations where you would be forced to have a 400 amp panel uh, protecting from a 300 amp circuit breaker. I can't emphasize what dictates the size of the panel um, and the cable is the size of the overcompetition device. 
So we'll talk about these um, as we go through. Determine overcurrent protection device. That's exactly what we we're just talking about, guys. Every panel has to be protected by an overcurrent protection device. Um, and you have to have a directory. Um, Matt, you guys have laid out your receptacle panels and your lighting panels, most of it, right? Circuited, ready to go. Have you paid it when you were circuiting? Do you guys remember how it was assigning circuit one, two, three, four, five, whatever to 42 or, or more? Later on, next week, no, not next week, the week after, when we do schedules, we're gonna hit the button and rev it, and it will generate a schedule for you. You know what the heck is a schedule? Schedule will assign a physical location to every circuit picker in your panel, meaning you go to circuit number one, it will say Chad Curtis bedroom, feeding lighting in Chad Curtis bedroom or room lighting or receptacle or both in room 111. That's you coming, Adam. You guys are going to be building it. It's already built. You will massage it to run this uh, this schedule. That's your directory required by code. So if you get into a panel and you look at the circuit pickers, there's no directory to identify what they are doing. This is violation of the code. But most of them is grandfathered in anyway. Um, OK. So the, the, how they do it, guys, separate feeders are to run from the main service equipment to each area of the commercial building. This is just taking the commercial building. Um, so you have a panel right here, main panel, and you're taking feeders, exactly like we, we've done, guys, to feed different tenants in this building. Feeders to feed. So that will be your main panel. My main panel, this will be, I don't know, panel one, panel two, panel three. So that's what they did in the commercial building. There's multiple panels for different locations. <clears throat> um, so the feeders will terminate in a panel in that particular location. Now, K Karen, we're using a commercial project in this book. There are five tenants, and each one of those tenants, guys, have his or her own panel located in their own area. Uh, type of panels, main circuit breakers, or main lugs only. So please, as you guys were circuiting, uh, you're going to see in Revit and elsewhere main circuit breaker and main lugs only. You're going to see these two terminologies. So every time you pick a panel, Adam, you have to ask yourself, do I need a main circuit breaker inside the panel or do I need a main lug zone? Did you guys hear me? So for example, a panel like this panel right here, I have the option. Either I put my circuit breaker right inside the panel or I can put my, I have to put my circuit breaker right here. So here's a 200 amp circuit breaker feeding a 200 amp panel. So this panel right here then can be main lux only. Can be main lux only. Any question guys about main lux only versus main circuit breaker or main fuse? Any comments, any questions? Questions about that? Why would we care? Main lux only will cost you more. You have to buy a, circuit, a main circuit breaker, 200 amp. Main lux only, cheaper. You're looking at a main lux only right here guys. So if you open that way, um, there is no way. If you want to be in there, some of them have another probably 10 to 15% extra dollars on percentage, extra dollars on your uh, equipment. Okay, everybody understand main circuit picker, main lugs only with panels, main circuit picker, main lugs only. So that's every panel have to have an overcome protection device, guys, mm -hmm. except if the overcome protection device is ahead of the panel in another panel, then the panel can be main lugs only. You don't have to have two circuit breakers. Um, the NEC code book, guys, uh, panels have to be dead front. What the heck is a dead front? Here, you're looking at it. If you open this one, can you just touch anything, energize it? That's a dead front. That's what we call a dead front right, right here. So nothing energized. All the panels have to be dead front. Otherwise, you, you open it and you're touching all these hot, hot things and you electrocute yourself. No carrying, carrying parts is exposed. There is nothing exposed that can carry carrying. That's all, all the curves. Maximum number of overcompetition devices governed by the panels. When they put the number of circuit breakers, Adam, we started with six and 12, 18, and keep all the way to notoriously famous is 42, and keep going all the way to 84. You can go from, these are what typically, they, they can, how many slots, how many single pole slots you can get here. They are, they go in multiples of six, six, 12, and so forth, for the most part. Um, so when you were circuiting, if you ran out of 42, you're going to add another six that will give you 48 and another six that will give you what? 54. And you keep adding sixes, guys, as you size your panels. Industry standards. Any comments, guys? What's the max? 
There is no max. It used to be a max. The maximum is as has determined by the manufacturer. Right now, typically the industry doesn't go more than uh, 84 circuit breakers. 84 circuit breakers in one panel. Um, okay, so that's basically what we um, rating and listing. Governed by rating and listing. There is a few requirements that require you to limit. Um, for example, if you have a panel, guys, and it doesn't have a main and it's a service. You are limited uh, inside this panel. If you don't have a my panel coming here, main lugs only, you're limited to six of them because that's a six disconnect. Can you guys see that? This is an exception. So I, I bring in a service here and no main to the service. I'm limited to six disconnects. So that's a limitation how many you, put, you can put in the panel. But that's not your lighting and receptacle panel typically. Here's how the panels, guys, panel boards look like. You're looking at it. Uh, gentlemen, you're looking at main lugs only. You're looking at main circuit break. Guys, when you start next project and this project, Karen, when you start dropping your panels and you go to Revit, you're going to see M, MCP and MLO. So you need to understand, am I, do I need a main lugs uh, only, meaning no circuit picker, or don't? What dictate, Adam? The only thing that dictates, if I want to feed this panel from this panel, here's what I would do, guys. I would take the... So here's my 200 amp panel here. I will come over here and feed this panel and to the lux, right? So I don't need a main here, right? Why? This is a 200 amp panel. So because my main is located ahead of it. So you can put the main in a either in the panel or ahead of the panel. So this panel, guys, is going to the Excel transformer here, um, to, to the electrical utilities here. Oops, let's do that to the utility to the utility transformer when you bring the power from the utility transformer you have to have main circuit break that's your main circuit disconnect means you have no choice now when you bring the power from the main panel into the other panels you have a choice most of the people guys will use main lugs only why main lugs only because it will cheaper installation now can i go and install another circuit breaker right here another 200 amp yeah bring it on what did you achieve? Not a whole lot, right? Not a whole lot, really, other than spending more money. Any comments, guys, about the main lugs only and main circuit breakers? The slots that you're looking at right here, guys, here's all your slots that you're looking at. These are typically the odd when we do them. These are the even, so meaning here's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we number them in the panel, and you'll see them in a second. Okay. Um, we have single phase panels, um, but the panel that we're using right now is a three phase, a three four wire. It's a, a three phase four wire panel. That's the one that we're using for our project. You can get these guys 208 slash 120, and you can get them 480 slash 277, three phase. <clears throat> um, these, we have, you can feed most of the what we feed from them is lights and receptacle outlets. Um, Matt, in our project, we had the receptacle panel, and as the name indicated, it feeds receptacles, and we have a lighting panel, and it feeds lights. From from time to time, you'll find an equipment that you stick in one of them, right? There was some few equipment we stuck in the receptacle panel. But typically, every building that you walk into, commercial building, will have a lighting panel and a receptacle panel and a mechanical panel for the mechanical equipment if it's a big building. If it's not a big building, the mechanical equipment go in the main, in the main panel and the receptacle panel, like our building. Uh, brand circuits for connection of appliances, such as permitted. So if you have appliances here, if you have a lot of appliances in the building, you have two options there. Either you feed them from a receptacle panel, if it's the same voltage, or you allocate a separate panel that call it appliances panel, depending how much you have like 100 amp worth of, of appliances in that building. Yep, shoot a panel for them. This is how we divide the panels, guys. If you have close to say between 60 amps to 100 amps worth of load, that's worth a panel. Throw a panel for them. Um, so any comments, guys, any questions about these panels? They're four wire, um, they're four wire three phase. These are the most comments that you use for lighting and receptacle panels. Um, the, the way the panels they run, they have the constructive, the, the, the main, the, the, the feeders, the phases run, guys, top to bottom, there's A, B, and C. That's how they construct them. I have a picture for you. Uh, 
Protective devices are connected out to alternating currents, so you'll see how they run them, alternating current um, connection directly across from each other. So let's see if I have a picture of that one. Okay, here's what they're trying to say here, guys. Uh, I have a picture nicer to look at. How the way they construct them, the smarter than Chad. Here's how they build a panel. Can you guys see that? They uh, they have say if this is a hundred amp panel. This is single phase hundred amp panel. Can you guys see phase A, phase B, or hot one? Here's my neutral. Here's my hot. Here's my ground. Typically, and can you guys see they they number them? One and two are connected to the same hot, and uh, three and four are connected to another hot. Do you guys see that? This is single phase. Of course, we're done with the single phase. Let's go to the three phase. Here's my three phase. The same thing. I will bring your attention, guys. Here's phase A. Here's phase B. Can you guys see where the connection is? And here's phase C. Here's phase C. So one, three, and one, three, and five are connected to phase A, B, and C. So when they label them, Karen, the one on the opposite of each other always in the same phase. One and two phase A. Phase B, phase C. So if you want to label them here, that will be phase A, B, C, A, B, C, and A, B, C, and A, B, C, and you keep going. It's so important, guys, to understand how the panels are made because when you circuit, that's how you're going to be circuiting them, right? So, Adam, if I want the three-phase loop, if I have a, 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 a machine that's three-phase, I can take phase one, two, and three. Circuit one, two. I have students, guys, that wrote on a, on a three-phase multi-wire circuit, circuit one, two, and three. If you take one, two is the same hot, and three, you're taking only two phases, basically. That's not three phase. In order to get the three phase load, guys, here's my three phase load. You have to go this way. Can you guys see that? And tie these two together. That's a three phase load. If you want two phase load, or on the other side, if you want two phase load, you can take these two. That will get you two phase or two hot load. Can you guys see that? From any two, adjacent two. On the on this side or on the other side. Now, if you want a single phase um. Uh, if you have uh, multiple lights, these are go guys are lights, and I want to feed them from multi-wire branch circuit. This is how you feed them, and since they are all neutral, you bring them all back to the neutral. Can you guys see that? And you tie these two together. You tie these together. Here's a three-phase load. How you connect that? Here's a two-phase or two-hot load, and here's a multi-wire branch circuit feeding lights and receptacles, sharing a neutral, sharing a neutral. Any comments, any questions, guys? How do we connect a load to a panel? Making sense? No? Yes? So that's basically it. See how the location of the neutral on the left, on the right, you're ground, all the phases, one, two, three. The odds are on the left, and the even numbers are on the right. Very, very important, guys, to know how the panel boards are, 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 are labeled. Um, so that's my panel board. Um, so here's... Um, Extra conductor, so you can see right now we have 80, 18 slots here to feed. So, Karen, if I need more, look at that. And now I'm moving to 36 slots here. 36 slots, so multiple of six. Can you guys see that? The same concept, the same concept. Um, any comments, any questions about the construction of panels? The construction of panels, and how do I feed? What if I want to feed single load? Guys? Let's go back one step here. See, what if I want to feed uh, just a, a hot and a neutral? To feed a hot and a neutral, all what you have to do, here's a light or a receptacle, and here's my neutral. Grab your neutral directly from here, and now you've got yourself 120 volt, one, one circuit, right? One circuit. So this is single phase, and these are also single phase multi-wire circuit. This is single phase. This is single phase two hots, two hots. Not two phase, it's the technical term, the single phase, two hots. And this is my three phase. My three phase, three hots. Three phase, three hots. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? You guys fully understand that one because probably we wouldn't touch on that one again, the way that's constructed. Here's where I get uh, uh, hyper. If we reach the industrial project and I see Adam is circuiting and he's putting for a three-phase circuit, circuit one, two, and three. You just haven't been with us. 
you know, because circuit one, two, and three are not three phase circuit. If you want a three phase circuit, you have to go one, three, one, three, five, or uh, you can do it this way, or you can do it this way. I mean, any way, as long as there are adjacent odds or adjacent evens. Do you guys see it? As long as adjacent odds or adjacent evens. That's how you get three phase out of a system adjacent odds or adjacent evens. Okay, so we got these. Um, the second thing is the way they build the panels too and the panel boards. Uh, let me see. They they put the buses this way. Um, arrangement by the code uh, UL. When you put your um, your buses, if you're looking at it from the front, if you're looking at it from the front, guys, it's always from left to right. A. Can you guys see how they left them? Phase A, phase B, phase C. If you're looking looking at it from the side, it's A, B, C, A, B, C. If you're looking at it at the top, it's going this way, A, B, C. This is going this way, A, B, C, and this is going this way, A, B, C. The way they list the, the, the phases inside the panel, left to right, A, B, C, top to bottom, A, B, C, front to back, A, B, C. Who cares if you are a project manager and you walk into a, a building and you need to modify it? It's really no nice to know and you're looking at it and they're not labeled it's really nice to know where which one of them is going to be the phase the phase a phase b phase c okay so that's um let me go we'll get into that one any comments guys any questions comments questions so that's the construction of these panels my the construction of my panels uh across from each other we talked about this one number of circuits um, number of overcompetition devices in the panel is determined by the needs of the circuits. We talked about the number of overcompetition devices and how many panels you need. Um, how many panels you need. We just looked at this one, guys. Here's an 18 slot panel or 18 uh, circuit breaker panel, three phase. This could be 28120 panel. We looked at this four wire. Um, the sizes of the panel, um, you guys have to have DeWalt. I mean, especially for next project because you get we can't run and do a lot of calculation from the wall the wall guys give you a size of all the actual size of the panel that they make them so here's the sizes of the actual panel size um so that would be that would be the size look at this atom that would be the size of the cover here can you guys see that the size of the cover it's a 200 amp, if they say 200 amp, or 400 amp, or 600 amp. That's the size of the copper, not the size of the overcompetition device. The size of the copper or aluminum inside it. Okay, so here's the sizes. You have, you can have 100 amp, 200 amp, 225, 400 amp, 600 amp, all the way to 1200 amp um, before you switch the switch gears. These are the size of the panels. So if my load is 400 amp, Karen, I have a, four, a 300 amp load. Here's what you end up for the most part doing. You have a 300 amp circuit breaker that feeds a 400 amp panel and the cable will be sized for 300. Can you see that? The, the panel can be slightly larger, can be larger than overcompetition device. What dictates is the overcompetition device. So that's legit 300 amp with a 300 amp cable landing on a 400 amp panel because I don't have, they don't make a 300 amp panel. They just don't make them. So what are you going to do? Your option either to go to 225, that's below, it can't handle your load, or to the next standard. So when you guys do a calculation next uh, project, when we start sizing panels, I have a lot of calculation where I ask you to size the panel based in Dewalt. I have standard sizes. Then this, you size the overcompetition device. Um, Okay, the rating of the panel, like I said, is determined by the internal bus size. So if it's 400 amp, it can handle 400 amp, or 80% of these 400 amp if it's continuous. Um, it's selected by, okay, after feeder capacity is determined, the panel board rating is selected. So that's exactly what we do, guys. You do your load calculation, and at the end, you will assign the panel based on the load calculation. How much amps you need in our project adam we came up with 200 amp lighting panel 100 amp receptacle and 500 amp uh, um, main panel why you guys did a great load calculation with your friend chad and manipulated based on the code and you came up with these sizes cool i can't emphasize the most confusing things uh, brian is a lot of people get confused between the panel size and the overcompetition device size the panel can be any size you want it to be as long as the overcompetition device is 
as as long as it's equal or more to the overcompletion of arms. So I can have 300, 400, I can have 600 here. What I can't have here is 225. I can't have this. That's wrong. Why? Because the overcompletion device is 300. I can't have an overcompletion device larger than the panel. Can't do that. But a panel larger than overcompletion device, bring it on. Ideally, the best atom, the best design is if your panel matches your overcompletion device. That's perfect. You're not paying for a lot of money, copper. Um, your design is, is, is per basically perfect. Yes, uh, Brian? So, when you're doing the main pressure, the main panel, and all the other things, panel size is 240 dots, so if you're going to pick that number down. Well, you start with the load. Here's my load. Suppose my load was 353 amps. That's my load. That's your start point. 353 amps, if you guys go to 240.6, you need to size over competition device. So 353 amps, that will get you a 400 amp. A 400 amp circuit breaker. Your feeder is a 400 amp. Now I need to buy a pen. So that's my over competition device and my feeder. They have to be 400 to match. Now, my panel, here's your option for your panel. Look at the options. You start with, you can put 400 amp here, bring it on. You can put 600 amp, you can put 800 amp, you can put 1200 amp, which will be fired. You know what I mean? You can put any panel there, any size, not a big deal. Typically, if, I mean, look at it. Which, which one would you choose? The closest, of course. That which one is the best design? That's a design. Now, here's what I can't do. Can I put 225 amp panel? No. It will burn. No, it can't, it can't handle. It can't handle heat. It's not rated. The load, look at the load, is 353, and this panel is rated for 225. Again, so that can't happen. Does that make sense, guys? That's probably the most important concept about sizing panel. So that's my sizing panels. Um, too important, overcompetition shall not exceed. This is what we just talked about. The overcompetition device, guys, right here, shall not exceed the panel rating. That's probably the most important thing. Overcompetition device for the panel is permitted to be located. Now, the overcompetition device permitted to be located in the panel or at any point ahead outside the panel. So, Adam, if you have a panel, you can, so what you can do, is my panel, guys. I can put a 200 amp circuit breaker in it, or I can have it this way. Here's my lungs, I have 200 amp here. Other way, that's conserved or protected. Any comments, guys, any questions? As long as, so the panel here is 200 amp, and the panel also here is 200 amp. So you can put the circuit breaker inside the panel or outside the panel. Typically for all feeders, guys, almost all feeders, the pan the circuit breaker is outside the panel. Because you have the main, you have the main panel coming to the building here, and the indication feeders everywhere. So you have to have circuit breaker here, right? So why should you have another one downstairs? Why should you have another one downstairs? Almost always, feeders, you end up with a main lug zone on the feeders. Cheaper. Could I put the main circuit breaker? Yeah, but you're going to pay more. You're going to pay more. Um, using wire gutters. Okay, panel board cabinet sizing. Um, if you, the cabinet sizing guys and the gutters and the physical size, they have to be sufficient enough to allow you to put all your wires inside them. So here you go. And that's designed by the manufacturer. And here's my main circuit breaker. So this area guys here, this, they call it the gutters, um, have to be, you have to have enough room to pull your wires. Right? Because you guys wire the little you wire that if you are so you, when you pull your conductors and you you uh, you angle them and you put them under the uh, um, circuit breaker and you torque them you need enough room to do all your work so there are special requirements for using wire gutters physical sizes of the cabinet shall be sufficient to accommodate these requirements panel board directory guys that's the that will tell you circuit number one it's feeding office uh red 10. so the nec code book require you to have to have a directory you have to have a directory that tells you which circuit picker by code feeds what remember when we design a building guys 
it's supposed to live for 40 to 50 years. So imagine the poor electricians, maintenance electricians are going to maintain the system for 50 years to come. You're going to make their life easier. You're going to make everything identified. The code also, if you put a spare atom, just a circuit breaker spare, you have to put so circuit, this circuit number two, spare. If it's a space, you know the difference between space and spare? Space is empty. So on the schedule, see number like uh, three here, space. Space is not required, but a lot of engineers will put space. Space means a slot ready to put a circuit breaker in it. A, a spare means a circuit breaker sitting there 20 amps and waiting for you to tie something to it for future expansion. That has to be identified. The spares have to be identified. Uh, when are you going to do, do this one, guys? With your friend Chad, you're going to do ne not next week the directory uh, or the schedules. We call them schedules. We're going to be doing it the week after. Here's what we can do, guys. Uh, sometimes the poor man's job, not poor man's job, instead of having a main panel, Adam, that feeds two panels, what they do is they have a, a fuse switch like this baby, 400 amp that feeds a gutter or a junction boxes and you tap these, you tap them to feed multiple panels. That's another way of doing it, cheaper way. What's the alternative for this is to have a main panel, look at the alternative, and feed these from a main panel, main panel. What would that save you, Adam? You know what it saved you? It saved you a, a panel. Instead of having a major panel, I have only a fuse disconnect like that baby on right there. Electrical contractor love this one, especially for smaller jobs, because it's cheaper. Then you get into the tab. So you have your feeder. This feeder right here, guys, is 400 amp. has to be 400 amp. Then you tab it. Can you guys see these tabs? Tab one, tab two, tab three, tab it. For these tabs, there is 10 foot tab and 25 foot tab. 10 foot tab by code, and you're going to be looking at these in article 220.21b. 10 foot tab and 25 feet tab. What's a 10 foot tab? That you measure from here to here to the overcome picture device, no more than 10 feet. If you go higher than that, you can't do that if you're using a 10 foot. 25 feet from here to here, 25. If you want to go 30, you can't do that. So, so limitation, there's limitation how far you can put these panels. Okay, so if you were to do it this way, guys, then this conductor here can be sized for 200 amp, and this conductor here can be sized for another 200 amp, and this conductor here can be sized for another 200 amp, the conductor. And this guy is sized for 400 amp. So you are tapping a 200 amp conductor from a 400 amp conductor. There's a couple of other rules, guys, for the tap conductor. You have to put them in a conduit to protect them from physical damage. And these conductors, and I, I want to go over the tab guys when they do commercial, but I'm just going to remind you, if you're using t uh, 10, that this conductor that you're looking at here cannot be less than 1 10 of uh, the 400. What's 10, what 10 of the 400? 40 amps. The smallest conductor that you can tap based on the 10 foot is 40 amp conductor. And we're tabbing a 200 amp conductor. We're good to go. Now, this is for the 10. For the 25, suppose the distance from here to here was 25, guys. So this conductor then becomes one third times uh, 400. What's a third of a 400, gentlemen? 133. Anybody? What's one third? A third of uh, 400? Can somebody give me, please? 133. <laughs> yeah. So this conductor atom cannot be smaller than 133. And guess what, Karen? We're already having the 200 amp here, so we're, we did not exceed it. Cannot be smaller. Gentlemen, we will go over the tab rules in details when we go to the commercial. This is just a test, a good test of it. Um, what you can, here's another way of, these are cheap ways of doing business. Instead of having a main panel, what they do, guys, is they have a circuit breaker like this baby here, and the same thing. They come from the first panel, they look at how it's going right through this panel. So you have to have enough gutter, enough room here for the conductor to go from one to another. And this will be, say, 200 amp here, and this will be 200 amp here. So that the 400 amp will go right through the gutter and feed both of them. Um, that's another way, but you have to have you have to have enough room. Can you guys see that here? You have to have enough room for the cable to go right through it, right through it. They do this one. They call it a tab. You're tapping it. 
tapping it from here versus I don't know if you can see how the other way of doing it you put a junction box so save you putting a junction box you're just going from panel to panel panel to panel to panel okay we'll talk about feed through guys when we go to the commercial uh, circuit directory or circuit identification very clear okay proper circuit directory every circuit must be legibly identified this is where a circuit directory every one of us have to be legibly identified uh, directory commercial building we talked about this one um, directory gives the load area where the area is going and um, what it should be clear to non-electrical people so the code require you guys to go circuit number one office red 10. it can't say chad curry's office you know why it can't say chad curry's office anybody knows what happened if chad gets fired and then and <laughs> that's that's part of it but i'm not kidding you the code requires requires you not to name uh these circuits based on they call it transient names like people's names you could be fired and hired hurt our feelings right but you can't name it you have to name it a name like this is called red 10. uh it's not chad's lab because chad moves to a different lab polly comes here and nobody knows after a couple of years nobody knows where chad's lab is and that's believe it or not that's requirement by code so you have to affirm you can't have a transient name that that changes okay identification of branch circuits um okay now if you have more than one system feeding the building guys you have to identify it the branch circuits so for example i have one panel here and another panel here and i have a transformer okay coming from here to here so this is 480 277 this is 208 slash 120 uh, 120 volt three phase all of them are three phase three phase here three phase here now adam i have now i have two different voltages i'm supposed to identify them by phase and by system so you're going to color code them you're going to have uh here it's going to be the color black red and uh, blue plus white white here and we're going to have a brown brown orange uh what is the other one brown orange and yellow yellow plus um green the green this area see they have to identify every system based on the color different color for the grounded conductor and the phase conductors why because the last thing you want to do guys is in this case especially the grounding conductor to use the grounding conductor of the 277 with the system of 208 so we'll emphasize this one when we go to the industrial project very very important you have to identify the investment system and voltage so people know which conductor coming from which system in our building uh, brian remind you guys we only have one system 28120 so do we have to mess around with this one no is it a good idea to color code them yes always you know we use blue red and um, uh, black red and blue and white with that system it's good to identify them um identify the feed feeders <clears throat> for the branch circuit um identify the source must be marked and um, they change it guys where if you have a panel feeding another panel here is this panel and here's another panel here um so this is um receptacle panel this is main panel right here on the receptacle panel you're going to have source main panel so adam if you're looking at this panel the receptacle panel here it will tell you that this receptacle panel is fit from the main panel that's requirement in 2011 came uh because you look can you see where this panel is fit from does it take an act of god to find where this panel is fit from right now it doesn't tell you where it's fit from because it's all time but now requirement 2011, I believe you have to identify. If you have um, unused openings, slots that hasn't been used for the circuit breakers and, and you have to close them. So slots like these guys have not been used. So you can see that cover here. You have to cover them with a field on them. So cover them so people don't stick their finger and touch any energized object. So that's your... Um, Okay, so that's all about your, your panels. Any comments, guys, any questions about the panels? The next part is going to talk about uh, clearances in the front of the panels. Any comments, any questions before I move to clearances in the front of the panels? Clearances in front of the panels. 
So I'm going to emphasize, guys, the overcome protection device have to match the match the conductor, and ideally we would like the panel to match it, but the panel cannot be less than that. We talked about the directory. We talked about main locks only, main circuit breakers. We talked about different way of designing it. The NEC code book, guys. The the second part. I'm going to go directly into my pictures here. Um, the second part talks about clearances in the front of the electrical equipment. We talked about this. Um, one more thing, guys. I guess that's uh, if you have. Um, we'll talk about this in the commercial project. If you have a center tab delta, a system like this center tab delta, you also have to identify it. This has to be orange. Can you see that? Permanently identified as an orange here. If it's a center tab delta, I will emphasize this one, guys, more when we go to when we go to the commercial project, when we go to the industrial, because it's more in the industrial part. Talked about this. Um, here's your panel, guys. You can have a, a the circuit breaker inside the panel or outside. Can you see, Adam, that the circuit breaker here is the fuse is 150 and the panel is 225, and that's legit. Um, we can have, guys, fuses inside or outside the panel. That's okay. Um, now, remember, you cannot load a circuit breaker or an overcompetition device more than 80% if it's continuous. That's, uh, that's You have to keep this in mind. Okay, clearances. Clearances in the front of the equipment, gentlemen. Clearances in the front of the equipment. If these are old panels, you are to allow a working space in the front of the equipment. You're looking at this panel, guys. This is violation of the code here. These should be removed from the code. So you can't store them right in the front of the panel, right? So um, the code, because we're sick of killing electricians, like I said, the code requires you guys to have the clearances, enough clearances in the front of the electrical equipment. So if all these are panels, you're looking at panels here, you have to have enough clearances around the panels to work on them. Here's how the clearances goes to work on it. The panels, the door, the panel door has to open at least 90 degrees, at least 90 degrees like that. Um, so the panel door has to open at least 90 degrees um, in order to get you the clearances, at least 90 degrees. Um, it could more than 90. The, here's what the, the working space, the working space, guys, is typically right in the front of the equipment. You have to keep clean, do not use for storage. That area here is a sacred cow right in the front of the equipment, shall not be used for storing anything else. That's called your clearances. Why? Because Mr. Electrician, when he or she comes to work on the equipment, they need to have ample amount of space to do their work. That's your no storage, nothing. The working space, guys, is measured from the dead, if it's dead front from the panel, if it's energized from the energized object. So if it's enclosed like this, this is where you measure the distance of three feet directly from the panel when you get your working space. Um, the width of the working space, the width of the working space is always 30 inches or the width of the equipment. So Karen, if I'm a switch gear, I need a 30 inches in the front of me or my width, whichever is larger. Can I get you guys to understand this one? This is so important when it comes to the electrical equipment. If you want to be a designer, if you want to be a drafter, it's so important. When you have a piece of equipment like this, you have to allow a working space in the front of it. The width of the working space has to be 30 inches minimum, right in front of the panel, 30 inches, or the width of the equipment, whichever is larger. The height of the working space is six and a half feet for short people like me can fit, but for tall people we have to have at least uh, six and a half feet for people to work on these equipments. Okay, the width of the equipment, whichever is larger. The height of the working space, guys, here's my height of working space. So you can see the height of the working space. So you're looking at right in the front of it right here is a cube, basically. If I am to draw that and exercise my drawing, that area here in front of that panel, guys, have to be um, that area in front of that panel. The cube in the front of that panel have to be dedicated to six and a half, can you see six and a half feet, 30 inches or the width of the equipment, uh, 30 inches, six and a half feet or the height of the equipment, dedicated to working in the equipment. The last thing is, so okay, 30 inches or the width of the equipment, 
six and a half feet or the height of the equipment, whichever is larger. Then the last thing, guys, is how deep the working space have to be. How deep the working space have to be. Um, the depth of the work, and you need, um, is this for, uh, you need an entrance to the electrical equipment, guys, too. That makes a lot of sense, right? At least one entrance sufficient area required to get in and out of the closet or the electrical room. So that's also required. Um, here's what they need. Here's all your equipment located here. You guys, if you are standing right here, Adam, and working on this piece of equipment, you need to be able, and there's an explosion, you need to be able to run in either direction and not being trapped in one location. That's the whole idea of working space, guys. You do not want to trap people in one location. So you have to have ample amount of time for them to work around the electrical equipment. Um, okay, so continuous let me see if we can uh, get that one i can't um okay here's what i'm gonna the width of the equipment guys now how deep the distance is look at this very simple if the voltage here to ground if your voltage to ground like this will be if this panel is um uh, 208 slash 120 volt 240 slash 120 volt that will be here. If your panel here is 480 slash 277 or 600 slash 345 or something like this. So if these are and right in the front of you in is non live or uh, or grounded parts, non live non live or non grounded parts, that's the clearances they even have working clearances. So it's both live parts on one side of the working space. <clears throat> So you're going to have a three feet if the voltage uh, to ground is 150 or less. Um, so that's your that's to, how 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 deep it's three feet. Um, if your condition this is called condition number one, non grounded. Condition number two, guys, look at that. It becomes if this is grounded like concrete, then this will increase into a foot and a half, a foot and a half, and condition number three. This will increase to four if if you have two panels facing each other. Any comments, gentlemen? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? If I test you or quiz you right now, would you guys be able to do that on that? The clearances? <laughs> I can't emphasize how important the clearances in the front of the equipment is, guys. The conditions are very simple, very easy. Condition number one. You have a sheetrock wall here in the front of a panel. If the voltages are these voltages, three feet, or these voltages, three feet, it doesn't matter what the voltage is. If you have a sheetrock wall or a wood wall, they're all three. If you have a concrete wall or a block wall or a metal wall, this continue to be three. The only thing that changes if your if your panel is 48277 or 600 345 or whatever, this will increase to three and a half. It increased by half a foot, the depth. Now, if you have two panels facing each other, gentlemen, if you have two panels facing each other, if both of them are 28120, then still three. If one of them is 48277, then you have to get, have four feet clearances in front of them. Summarize. For the most part, guys, the working in front of the panel is three feet or the width of the equipment. The height is six and a half or the height of the equipment. And the depth is... Typically three feet for all the condition except two conditions. One of them is 48277 um, and 600. That will get you right uh, grounded object in the front of it. That'll get you three and a half. And if you have two panels facing each other, one of the voltages is higher than 150 to ground, which is 48277. That will give you gentlemen uh, four feet. That will give you a four feet. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? I cannot emphasize, guys, knowing the clearances in the front of the equipment. That's a must. Um, when we are doing, when you put your panels now, when you start throwing your equipment, um, um, Derek, and if you go put a mechanical equipment right in the front of the panel, guess what they're going to tell you? The inspector say, well, do you have three feet clearances in front of it or not? So that's my clearances in the front of the equipment. Um, I thought we got that one, got the voltages, talk this, we talked about all these. Um, so that's my working space, remember that working space. Um, clearances, clear, 
uh, the width, the height, and what's not, uh, the working space entrance, <clears throat> sufficient entrance to come to these equipment. Large equipment, large equipment guys require to have two entrances. Um, if you have, here's how the code defines a large equipment. Large equipment defined by the code as um, 1200 amps. If you have a 1200 amp and six and more than six feet and more than six feet and more more than six feet. If you have a piece of equipment, guys, six uh, 1200 amp and more than six feet, the code requires you to have two doors for the electrical room. One door in this side and one door the other side. That becomes a major thing. So that's your, your large equipment. Two doors required for large equipment. 1200 amps or higher and more than six feet. Okay, so, so when I put my equipment guys right here, here's my equipment. I have to have a door here and a door here. And there's clearances how far this door has to be from here to here. Sit, you know. So you have, um, so that's, this is your large equipment. You have to have two doors for, for the room. The exception for the two doors, Adam, is if you have continuous unobstructed um, view. For example, here's my panel here. And if I put my, orient my panel this way, and I put my door right here, so people can run right through here, that's on. Uh, 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 continuous and unobstructed, you know, you need only one door. Okay, that's exception number two. Exception number three, what happened if I have my piece of equipment right here, guys, and I double the clearances. So if that was supposed to be four, I um, it's supposed to be, let's just say three and a half, or because, we, say three, because we're in the two-way. This is a two-way slash 120 volt, and it's a 400 amp and a seven foot section. So this is supposed to be three because this concrete here, I multiply this by two, that will give me six clearances. Then if you do it this way, then you only need one entrance. You don't need two entrances. You only need one entrance. If you double the clearances in the front of the equipment, if you double the clearances in front of the equipment. One more time, guys. There's working space required around electrical equipment. Typically the width, 30 inches or the width of the equipment, the height six and a half or the height of the equipment, the depth from three feet to four feet, depending on the condition. If your equipment is big, fat, fluffy equipment, like 12,000, 1200 amp or higher, and uh, um, and uh, width is more than six feet, then you are required to have two doors coming to that room where you, your equipment is located. With one exception, if the door is directly in front of the equipment, unobstructed continuous, or if you double the clearances in the front of the equipment, double the clearances in the front of the equipment. These are the two conditions where you do not need two doors. Any comments, any questions? When you guys become engineers and designers, that's what you're gonna. That's that's what's required from you. The clearances in the front of the equipment. Okay. So here's doubling. Can you guys see how we double the area here? Um, we're doubling the area. Doubling the space, required space double in order to get away with one door. And don't forget, you still have to have not, you, you can't sit it fat, you can't sit it closer than 1D. So, for example, if this 1200 amp and that's say uh, three and a half feet, you can't sit it back closer than three and a half. That's the minimum that you can bring it here. Min. And if this is three and a half times two, that will give you seven feet from here to here. So, big room. Big room. Okay. Uh, in an electrical room, Karen, with large equipment, you have to have a panic door like this. So if the big ball of fire chasing you, you don't, you, this would not qualify as a door to an electrical room because it's twist. You throw yourself on this panic door and the door will open. That's required in large equipment room. The last thing I want to talk about, guys, is um, is the dedicated space. There's something called dedicated space. The dedicated space, Karen, is to bring your pipe, your uh, electrical pipe. So when you bring your pipes, guys, up here, these are all your conduits coming to the top of the switch gear, <laughs> up to six feet, or the height of the structural ceiling, Derek, 
you cannot bring anything above the panel. That's called dedicated space. Not for you to climb in there right above the panel or right underneath it. This is for people. Here's my panel. I want to bring my pipe gas up in the top of the panel or from the bottom. The top and the bottom of the panel to the width and the depth of the panel up to a height of six feet above the panel or the ground below the panel. This is called dedicated space for electrical equipment, meaning you cannot bring other than electrical. So can I bring right in this space? Can I bring my duct here? Big duct coming in here, heating and cooling duct. Can I bring it right here? No. Can I bring a suspended ceiling like this, guys? Suspended ceiling is an exception. So that here, right here, you see that one here? The suspended ceiling, six feet from here to the top, the suspended ceiling is in it, is okay. Suspended ceiling um, or false ceiling is okay to enter. One more time, dedicated space is for equipment. And for equipment, guys, you can have the width and the depth of the equipment to the height of six feet above or the structural ceiling and at the bottom to the floor. These are dedicated to the electrical, meaning you cannot have plumbing. You cannot have a sprinkler system. You cannot have any structural stuff in, in it because it's dedicated to the equipment. Any comments, guys, any questions about the dedicated space and the working space? Dedicated space and the working space. So that's your dedicated space, working space. Very, very important, guys. The last thing I want to talk about, guys, is in the electrical room, the code requires you to have illumination. You have to have an electrical room, guys, light. Makes sense, right? And that light um, cannot be on an occupancy sensor. You cannot put this light on an occupancy sensor unless you have an override, a switch. Here's this, here, and here. And you have a switch right here. Here's my 20 amp circuit. If I have a switch that override the occupancy sensor, put it in a, uh, in a manual position, it's okay. But you cannot have an auto control over the light that in an electrical room. Anybody knows why? You're doing working energizers in electrical room and you're, we're, it malfunctioned. So it turned off. The light turned off while you're working energized. That big hazard. So they don't want you to have auto control in the electrical room. You can if you have a manual override. So if you put a manual override, bring it on. If you don't have a manual override, shall not be used. So you have to have a light and it cannot be, it has to have the manual override on it. So that's, let me see if I forgot something here. That's basically what I want to emphasize here, guys. Um, we talk about the clearances. Um, all these clearances from the equipment, 600 volt and what's not, depth of the space and work of the space and what's not, entrances to large equipment, uh, the zones, all these, illumination. So that's basically it. I can't emphasize, guys, how important it is to, um, just to summarize what we have done, what we have done, really the most important thing that we have done is the clearances in front of the equipment, you know, and... I wouldn't hire somebody personally if he gets out of school and he doesn't know the clearances in, the, in front of the equipment. You have to have the three condition. Condition number one, wood or sheetrock in front of the panel. All of them are three. Condition number two, concrete or steel or block. That's called grounded object. And that's that, that becomes, all of them are three except if the voltage is 48.37 becomes three and a half. Condition number three, guys, is two panels facing each other and still three feet between them if the voltage is 28120. If the voltage is 48277, they go from three feet all the way to four feet. If the equipment is large equipment, they call it large, that's 1200 amps and not or, and sit more than six feet, then they require you to have two doors. If I'm the switch here, one door here and one door here. There's one little problem. How are you going to open the door of this wall? How are you going to open the door of this? There's nothing here to take you anywhere. So they give you alternatives. Alternative, I'm a switch gear. Instead of sitting me this way, guys, reset me right in the front of the door. Then you don't have to have two doors. Orient. Can you see? Instead of orienting the switch gear this way, just reorient the switch gear right in front of the door. Then you don't have to have two doors. Or if you can't, or double the clearances. If the clearances from here to there are supposed to be three feet based on the condition, make it six feet. Then you have only one door. See how they allow you options. And of course, you have to have a light in the electrical room, and the light have to do what? Have not auto control, uh, auto control, 
And the door to the electrical room, large equipment electrical room, have to have a panic uh, bars on it. So when you push it, it will it will open by itself. I don't think I forget anything. I forgot anything, guys, uh, here. So please, this is very, very important topic, guys. We talked about the panels and the overcompetition device ahead of them and the feeders and what's not. We talked about the clearances in front of the panels and dedicated working space and dedicated space. Um, so important, the width and the depth and the height for the working space as well as the dedicated. Working space for people, dedicated space for equipment, Karen. Equipment means pipe coming at the top of the of the uh, equipment. Any comments, Brian? Comments, questions? Okay. So make sure you guys please read that chapter. This is great. If you understand it now, you save yourself and mine uh, the hassle of going over it when we do a, a switch gears. We're going to do the same thing for switch gears. We'll review it one more time. Okay. What I have for you, that's what I have for you guys. I'm hoping that you will be done with your lights today. I need to check in and see where you are, guys, in your lights. Um, you have to start the outside light or you're going to be behind. Um, so uh, let me walk those of you who still want, um, have not done the light, let me walk you guys through how to import them. Thank you.